Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Red Dusk, my friends. I'm your host, Mr. Iraqi Lover. And hopefully, so far, I've not been demonetized. Well, actually, no, I, I have been. Hopefully, I didn't get another strike yet, but we'll see what happens. It always happens a year or a couple months after the video goes up. But regardless, hope you're having a great day. We're in Iraq, and we're having bullets and boozes. What I wouldn't do it for a drink of Iraq. Oh, that was the only thing Ayman and Jalal could think of at the moment after a harsh day of battle against Kurdish rebels in Rwandus and its surroundings, and fortunately for them, a bar where whatever was left of it was spotted a few meters from them, and when Jalal saw it, he ran towards the bar and exclaimed, all ecstatic. Oh yes, finally we can drink something. Jalal, stop you idiot. There may be mines or even gorillas there, Amen yelled. Oh, come on, Amen. You know the city's clean, you're just being paranoid now, Jalal replied, but Amen rebuffed quickly. Do I need to remind you what happened to Ibrahim in Makmur? He made the mistake of not paying attention and got his legs blown off by a mine and I'll never walk again. We're not going to make the same mistakes as him, I'll assure you that. And besides, Jalal said with a smirk stamped on his face, You owe me one, because if it wasn't for me, that gorilla near the post office would have fouled you, filled you with lead, so are you coming? Amen was left baffling for a moment, until he decided to follow his comrade. The bar was full of debris, and below them were a few bodies, surely killed by an al Samud missile, but that was important for the two soldiers in search of something to drink. But while Amen hasn't found anything, Jalal has found something interesting. Hey man, you might want to look at this. Jalal said while Amen took a closer look at the bottle that was of a circular shape and had a face printed at the center with the inscription, the Chia of Romagna. My god, that is brandy and one of the best in the world even. Jalal says amused, yeah, but what is a bottle of brandy doing in a place like this? Amen replied while Jalal responded, I don't know and I don't care, want to drink, my friend? Sure thing, replied Amen as he took... Uh, took the glass of brandy, but before he drank it, he asked his comrade, Hmm, those girls are pretty tough, huh? Yeah, they were, but not tough enough. As we're, of course, still trying to increase our oil production, if you're running this one again, please go ahead. And, uh, modern refineries. Sanctions and a general lack of care and maintenance have left our oil infrastructure in poor condition. While the rest of the world are long on our exports, it is our utmost priority to repair and modernize its infrastructure, as well as build new refineries that are fit for the 21st century, of course. As we're building, 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 and we're still down in uh, Africa trying to fight here, too. Uh, it looks like we're doing all right. Not great, but not terrible. Are you guys actually going to try to win here? I don't know if you actually could. Looks like you're really losing pretty badly, so we're just going to hang out and hold for now. Uh, that's the case. You can probably expand yourself just a wee bit. Going to Johannesburg or Blumfontein would probably be a good idea, but still. Ah, I love oil production. Yeah, we've got decaf coffee here, too. Civil War resources factory output in this eh, it's not bad we could probably use it I uh, still got this stuff to do too yeah air defenses 60% uh, chance Oof. well I guess we could try it it only takes a couple days after modern refineries then what I guess uh, rebuild the iron Iraqi Navy unlike the great, great powers abroad the naval history of our nation is brief and fleeting oh well that's not good a date that will live forever in infamy. Well, if you read this one, please go ahead. Our small coastal forest has been often no match for any adversary, adversary being completely destroyed twice in the past two decades. While some people might say a third attempt is foolish, you must remember that whoever controls the Persian Gulf controls the trade through it. It's true. Alright, so we did this last time. We're going to bury it, decoys, and put itself underground. Launch air superiority. I don't know about that yet. Because I have 17 days. 44% chance. 15. 66% chance of a painful wound, which we don't want. We want the Burning Eagle, which would be better for us. Modern refiners are nice. Yes. 44% chance. Barrier aircraft. So now 62% chance we get Burning Eagle. Hopefully we get that one. 44% chance. 75%. Oh, no. 44 still. Reposition air defenses? Yes. Because we have to watch this one like a hawk. I hope. You know what? We can save just in case. Maybe. Kuwait City, huh? We're just trying to be successful here. But these coalition forces, man, I swear. They do not want anyone to be successful here in the Middle East. Come on. Burning Eagle. It appears our efforts have borne fruit. Where the coalition air force is failing to regain control of southern Iraq during the recent assault attempt. While well, I've suffered some losses, it is safe to say that we've come out victorious in this encounter, and it's likely that this failure will force the enemy to regroup and reassess their perceived capability, almost certainly delaying any future attempts at another assault. The Eagle's been injured. It's great. 
So we're going to do these two first, and then we're going to choose this other one too. Hey, another military factory. Don't mind if we do. We need more guns and towed artillery. Uh, are we, do we, do we, are we not making any arty? Did I completely miss that last time? Well, I guess I did. What a shame. All right. So this one is 60%. Oh, we could risk it. We're looking pretty good overall. Airspace lost in Al Basra, but it's looking a lot better than it was a few, like, honestly, a few months ago. All right, we're going to try it. Please don't lose. Oh, God, don't lose. As we build the Navy, increase uh, monetary incentives. Unlike the patriotic and capable armies of our neighbors, our armies filled with unmotivated conscripts. In any serious conflict, their lack of willingness to fight will freeze their entire s system and cripple even our loyal and capable Republican Guard. With excess money from previous reform, we can raise the salaries of our conscripts, providing them with the financial incentive to be on their best performance. Mm. And here comes the formation of the African Liberation Front. Oh, reposition here. Go and spend, it's fine. Come on, come on. Oh, I feel frack. Frack, frack. Uh, bruh. That actually looks relatively decent up here. Yeah, we're definitely getting more uh, command fire. We can keep our war sport high. Uh, dogs of the west. Weekly war sport goes up. You know what? I'm gonna do dogs of the west. More war sport. We're already ninety percent, but still. Uh. Air defenses in southern Iraq. Suppressed, well. Gonna have to, don't we? Could you guys actually win here? Maybe not. Prob maybe, yeah. Okay. Not bad. Come on. Unless it's from Desert Storm. The Desert Storm campaign of the coalition forces in the 90s all but destroyed our military. The terrific air power of the West sunk our navy, neutralized our air defenses, and caused our air force to flee. This mistake must be must not be repeated again, and our army must be trained to counter such shock and awe tactics. Nice. Burning Eagle. Damaged. It's fine. How much do we get a day? Not even one. 0.56. Not ideal. So almost back at square one. Um, I don't think you can win here. Well, you might just be able to. If these guys would help support the attack, we can encircle a couple divisions here. Which would be pretty nice. This resource extraction is good. Uh huh. And we're going to continue working on a lot of stuff. Oh god. Even some, this is just basic stuff. Okay, so... 60%. Invasion of Afghanistan, look at that. Now we'll see what happens. There you go, nice job. Lessons from Desert Storm, good. Now we can expand domestic industry for two more military factories and rocket artillery, or purchase foreign equipment will become available. Expand domestic dockyards, purchase foreign ships. We could buy them. I think we wouldn't be self-sufficient. Perhaps the biggest flaw in our past ventures into the sea was our complete reliance on foreign powers, either restricting our foreign policy or taking a chunk out of our military budget. Luckily, the most overt example was the confiscation of the four frigates and six corvettes that we purchased from Italy, which were never delivered following the Gulf War. It's finally time to invest in our own shipyards instead of channeling money towards foreign powers that are under no real obligation to deliver on any promises. There you go. Chemical weapons using here? Okay. Alright, whatever. Nice job. Destroying some Soviet divisions. It's alright. Ah. Oh boy. Hey! Our preparations and our work's paid off and it hurts. Great! Alright, and we're out of command power. This is not good. 
Canadian Parliament under attack. Coup in Yugoslavia, look at that. Damaged, contested. That's gonna be higher. Labor, finance. It's not bad. It's not half bad, really. That's consumer goods. The factory output. You guys are actually doing really well with Ahmad Hashim. Well, since they're going to be self-sufficient anyways, expand domestic industry. Allowing a foreign powers leaves us at their mercy and greatly restricts the independence of a new foreign policy. After all, there's a reason why every developed and developing country strive to maintain and expand their power domestic the power of domestic industries. We have the experienced designers we know how to manufacture. All that is left is the factories themselves. Yeah. Uh I want this one. It's more expensive, which means it should be better, right? Sure. I'm not really going to focus on a navy anyways, but still. Sure. Nice job, guys. Euro, all right. Now we could do it. 75% chance, it's not bad. Saving is going to do nothing, basically, but it still makes me feel better. Five divisions is quite a few. Woo. Six divisions is even more. Wow. There's a lot of guys to fight at one time, but still. 2.47. Dogs of the West. Manpower. Fair rate attack and defense will increase. Yeah. Come on. Coalition forces pull back. After many years of our nation being subject to constant terror bombing, it seems like we finally managed to free ourselves from the all seeing eye of the coalition. Look at that. Yay! Um, the head of the Air Forces of the region has announced that all remaining coalition aircraft will be pulled back to friendly bases, ending the multi year long campaign and force a no fly zone over our nation. With the coalition aircraft completely and effectively gone from the region, our Air Force is now free to operate unimpeded. The skies are ours. Look at that! Played our strengths. We rule the skies! Our Air Force defenses have accomplished what was once thought impossible. Our aircraft is now free to rule the skies, and our ground force no longer have to fear of being attacked from above. From now on, we can fully focus on rebuilding and restructuring our Air Force and rebuild it once its w once proud reputation. Ahmad, you're doing a great job. Well, but now we're not. But now we are, but now we're not. Give it up. He's not doing too bad. He's doing actually a lot better than I thought he would. I spoke too soon. That's alright. Got to impressed with him. Northern Alliance, huh? Reduce the nuclear bomb damages. Islamic fanaticism. Hardened fighters, wow. Don't think I want to send two tank divisions there. Oh god. Did I just send two divisions to die there? Well, so much I tried. Cashmere conflict escalates. Hey, at least we rule the skies. We saw nothing. That would be good to get rid of too. But, um, we're going to continue on with the army. The current state of the army is not the best. They're struggling to support our armed forces, and beyond that, the army's not even in a position to fight a war. We're even intervening against civil rebels. We must do everything to improve our army. Absolutely. Oh, well, these guys aren't doing half bad here.
the inspection attention. As soon as the sergeants were drawing out, uh, a small formation of soldiers lined up before our room. Besides him stood a major who was there for an unexpected inspection, and he had what to see. And a half filled platoon with untrained, unequipped, and probably still half asleep soldiers. Inspecting further, he could even see that the weapons they carried were quite old and not properly clean. He wanted to complain, but he just sighed, and he knew that if he started talking about everything that was wrong, he probably wouldn't leave for a good few hours. Even the surgeon noticed the major displeased look. And after going through a regular inspection and holding a small overused speech about the soldier's duty, the major and sergeant talked inside, inside the base HQ. I know that we're not in the best shape, but the sergeant was cut off. No need to explain. I've seen the same thing happen in all other bases I've inspected. Heck, I, even the armor divisions aren't doing good these days, Major said, obviously tired and disappointed. It's very hard to keep the army in shape when we're sanctioned by most of the world and have a crippled economy, Major continued. Hopefully it'll be better. Uh, uh, perhaps an army reform is coming, Sergeant answered briefly. God, I hope so. Because we got these to do, but we'll get there eventually. Um, what is this? Improve relations with the Saudis. Small guy. Americans aren't looking. Run them over again. That's cool. The Treacherous Republic. Pan Iraqi ideas. Ooh. Ready the army. The Forbidden Power. Ooh. On land of madness and old wounds. The man in the sand. Ask for Soviet support. Prepare the plan. Revenge for 88. Set down victorious. Well, get their backing in their oil. Uh, we got after we got rid of Kuwait, we need to start talk, some talks with the Saudi leader to improve our relations. As with the increase of the army personnel, especially those made up of vehicles and tanks, they need fuel in the beginning of a friendship with the Saudis. We could also sign some trade agreements on fuel and get their backing. At the beginning of this little friendship between Iraq and Saudi Arabia, we must try to win their support. By doing so, we can expand our influence and diminish the American one. The Yankees will most likely take this event as an affront to their power, but by doing so, the world will understand that the American giant is losing its power, of course, in the Middle East. The small guy. After taking the Syrian territories that belonged to us, or maybe before then, it's time to take revenge on our little neighbor, Kuwait. Kuwait, even if it is an insignificant nation, has almost led to the total defeat of Iraq and its plans thanks to the intervention of the Americans. Time's about to change, and that little guy will stop bothering us, but for now we have to limit ourselves to studying them. It's not the time, or not the right moment, to strike them yet. There's a little bit of stability, but that's alright. Get more war support, which we don't need, but whatever. Um, uh, Americans ain't looking. After several weeks of waiting for the exact moment to hit them, as it finally arrived, the Americans are too busy with their internal politics and problems. We have to hit that little guy that is Kuwait now, or this occasion can never happen. Well, let's see. Are they guaranteed by the Americanos? By military access and the oil producers, Jabr al Ahmad al Asaba. We're gonna run you over. The time has come, the military is ready, and we'll finally wipe that dull nation of Kuwait off the face of the earth. And then at the same time, we'll also take control of the gas stations where Americans usually import fuel into the country. The start of this operation in the entire Middle East and the enemies of Iraq and its people will understand that Iraq does not forgive the wounds suffered by other nations. It is very true. Sorry, South Africa, but we got bigger fish to fry now. You're not even doing anything here anyways. You're actually slowly losing the war, but whatever. Oh, Northern Alliance. Well, whatever. Taliban insurgency. Well, you deserve what you get. Turn them over again. And then the treacherous Republic, Syria. Since Saddam's candidacy as president has caused us various internal problems, such as turning our own people against us with their ideals. The biggest affront was when the Syrian ambassadors proposed a unification treaty between Syria and Iraq, which is obviously rejected by the government now. The Tams come take revenge on the treacherous Republic by beginning to influence their population with Ba'atis ideals, as they tried to do with us in the years past. A rough alarm clock. Well, Richard Jones really needs some good sleep. After he had worked all night at the American Embassy in Kuwait City, he could barely keep his eyes open after unraveling so much bureaucratic schemes, but had seen in his bed after walking for what seemed to be like an eternity, but a feeble smile on his face. Finally, it's time to sleep. He slipped up falling into the arms of Morpheus. But after a few hours in his half sleep, a series of booming distant noises startled the ambassador. What the heck was that? Were those missiles? They thought before going outside to check the situation, and there he met his secretary, Giz Gizel. The Kuwaiti housekeeper, Hessa, and the Napoleon friend called Lee. They're all trying to figure out what was happening, and Rick, believing Lee knew something, grabbed his friend's shoulders and asked him, Lee, for the love of God, can you tell me what's going on? He was quick to respond with a phrase that left everyone in shock, especially Hessa, who had lived that horror 13 years ago. That son of a gun, Saddam, has invaded once more. Rick, it's 1990 all over again. For a moment, there was a surreal moment of silence when everyone tried to accept the fact that all of this was really happening, but it was Gizela, or G Gizela, that broke the limbo. What now, Mr. Ambassador? She said in a worried tone, with Richard Jones replying, We need to leave now. Oh, yeah. Goodbye. Good job, guys. We've got another <clears throat> issue to deal with over here. 
You know, join the crew. That one church is public spread pan Iraqi ideals. As the Syrians try to intrude into our politics by spreading their ideals and also to propose a union between Syria and Iraq, we do so now with them. Our plan will start uh, for starting a large-scale military operation in Syria to spread out the Iraqi ideals and the imagery of Saddam Hussein. And with this tactic, we will increase the consensus of the Syrian population towards the Iraq and many people will lose faith in the government. Absolutely. And rid of the army. After spreading our ideals, the time has come to prepare military troops for possible invasion of Syria. For now, we'll limit ourselves to basic training into also combat preparation of Syrian territory. Meanwhile, the spreading of pan Iraqi ideals will continue, but will be gradually reduced. Over time, Iraq will take everything that belongs to it until there's nothing more to stand in our way. And strike them now. After long and careful military preparation, the time is coming to attack and conquer Syria. With the spread of pan Iraqi ideals comes some citizens who could also help us by providing some basic support. The Middle East is about to understand what power Iraq is about to become. We'll take all the territories that belong to us, and we'll destroy every single one of the enemies of the nation, and we'll kill anyone who tries to obstruct us to Damascus onwards. Ah, Saddam, Iraq, savior. That's right. Radio, cruise missiles. How about better planes? Cass, fighters? Let's get some better Cass. Um, we don't really have a lot of tanks. It'd be better probably for organization. Dude, these guys, I don't, do we have enough tanks for anything here? We need attack helicopters, huh? They're using attack helicopters? We don't have any attack helicopters. Um, because right now, division-wise, we've got like 12... Oh, well, we do have actually 12 tank divisions. That's actually not bad. That's not half bad, actually, at all. Ah. So I guess we're going to continue mobile using this tank stuff. Get a slightly more organization, uh, more waiver breakthrough, and more speed, which is nice. Political advisors, construction speed, factory output, military command, army morale. More defense is not bad. Maybe more air? No, but we don't get any air XP, so that kind of sucks. So I might do early mobilization instead. Partial mobile. How's the South African war? It's still pretty much stomach. Okay, rid of the army. Then strike them now. Oops. And we'll continue with Ender Oil. For the constant talks between Iraq and Saudi Arabia, and the higher relations between our two nations, the Arabs have finally decided to support us by providing us with fuel at a lower price. For the constant talks between Iraq and Saudi Arabia, and the We read this twice. So continuing to maintain relations to other Saudis would be much more likely to support us, and our cause in the Arab world. I hope to God we can win. It looks like we should be able to. No guarantee, of course. Oh, Syria, Iraq War. A new conflict between the Syrian Republic and the Iraqi Republic has broken out in the Middle East after uh, rising tensions. This conflict arose after Saddam publicly announced that the ideas for which the Syrian Republic stood were hostile to his government, and they sought the integration of Iraq into Syria. Thus, the removal of Saddam. Saddam stated that Bashar forced him into this war after several nation national threats and provocations aimed at the Iraqi people. On the other hand, Bashar stated that the Syrian people seek nothing more than friendly relations between all Arab peoples, and that the authoritarian and right-wing Ba'atists must vanish for the sake of our freedom. Now, the conflict has become entirely unavoidable. Several battles between Syrian troops and Iraqi troops have already been commenced. Mediation between the two nations is unfeasible. I was in the military more attack defense by 5%. This seems really freaking strong. It's only minus 9%. That's not bad. 15. 15. They don't attack us, can we attack them? Oh, yeah. What do they have here? 10,000 losses already. Holy crap. Go, tanks, go. No wonder it's so easy. I always, like, I sent volunteers from, like, Yugoslavia. I want to play as them. And the U USSR want to play as them um, to invade uh, and try to defend Syria. But, like, Syria, it's not ready for prime time. They got oil and Assad's fine line, but that's pretty much it. Right now, we're not doing so hot. Oh, assembly bomb. Look at that. 10,000 versus 25,000. See what you can do. We've got a lot of infantry still, but, you know, whatever. And their oil? The forbidden power. After solving the internal problems that plague Iraq, we can finally focus on most of our reserves on developing the military. Since the 80s, Iraq has always tried to develop an atomic bomb. But in vain, as the Western nations and the U.S. do not want Iraq, one of the few nations in the Middle East not under American influence, to develop a nuclear bomb. Many years have passed since then. 
And after a time, we've managed to solve internal problems and the economic crisis. It's time to come to develop this weapon. Oh, uh, Damascus has fallen. Oh, we cut him off. Hey, the war raged, waged by Saddam Hussein against Syria has come to an end today. For the victory of Saddam's troops and the people of Iraq. The Iraqi units managed to advance without too many problems into the Syrian hinterlands and quickly captured the cities and advanced to Damascus after having besieged it for several weeks, having exiled it from any kind of supply, conquered it, and conquered it. With the fall of the capital, the Syrian government surrendered and the Bashar and his family were exiled from the country. After serious capitulation, Iraq established an occupation authority, one led by Saddam's most loyal officers, with the same political alignment as Saddam, of course. Once we're ready for integration, the occupation authority will be disbanded and a serious permanent fate will be decided. The land of Baghdad roars once more. Who is he He's here? Ali Hassan Al Majid. That's right. Yeah, a research slot and more research slots. Yeah, hey, that's pretty nice. Um, do we go to war with anybody else? Old wounds. Old man in the sand. Iran. Besides Iran, weaponize the atom. The atom, even if small, is one of the components and most important of one of the most destructive weapons in the world. That is the atomic bomb, of course. Iraq has been craving this weapon for years and can finally get to it. Our scientists have the skills more than suitable for the development of this weapon. What well, Saddam is the necessary power to issue this order. After Saddam gives the order, anyone in the government will have to fulfill every single request imposed by scientists for the development of this weapon. Min Ajil Aliyariki for Iraq. Yeah. I speak Iraqi. Or Arabic. Something like that. I don't know. No ship yet. Hey. Surprising to see the social spark not banned, but whatever. Goods factors. Um, honestly, you know what? I never go with this. I want to go with Minister of Education, maybe, because we need that research speed. You know, these are very, very strong, though. Um, I want the factory output too. We can build more, maybe. We can make up our factory output first, I guess. Why not? Better artillery. That's good. Even more soft attack from artillery. Yes. Do we not have any planes? Oh, that's a big mistake. Close air support and fighters. The forbidden power. <clears throat> uh, more war support would be pretty decent. Import foreign uranium. For the development of nuclear bombs, we not need only nuclear factories, but all above materials, especially uranium, which we do not have at the moment. The best choice we can make is to enter the trade pacts with major uranium exporting nations such as the Soviet Union and Canada. It would be very difficult to convince Western American nations to trade pacts with us, but we must try, and the future of Iraq and its people are at stake, of course. Scum of the Earth. Uh, division, attack, and defense. Stability. More political power. Sure, I'm okay with that. Mass uprisings. Oh boy. Boy, that's not good. Better support equipment. Nice. Holy crap. Bosnia. Croatian Republic of Hairs, Bosnia. Oh, what are you doing? Merkovic. YPA Tito Center. Bro, what did you do? Domestic facilities. If we want to produce atomic bombs, we need nuclear factories, as we should invest part of our money for the creation oh boy, of new nuclear factories and the expansion of the ones we already have. When our plan is successful, we can finally start plans for the creation of a nuclear warhead. Oh boy. Kosovo Liberation Army, huh? The Republic of Macedonia. Oh, propaganda disillusionment. When completed, 50, huh? Well, we still on the daily arm XP, so. Restart the to light them. After developing our domestic facilities, it is time to try and repair the Tuwita. Tuwita contains some uh, remains of nuclear reactors and was used by the government for the production of nuclear weapons. 
but it's currently in a very bad state due to the bombings by Iranians in the Iranian Iraqi War, or by the Israeli Air Force in the Operation Opera, which aimed to destroy Iraqi nuclear production centers. Now that we have solved most of the internal problems, it's time to try to fix it with a two white thumb. In operation, we can finally start a nuclear program and eventually develop weapons of mass destruction. Sounds good to me. Oh, they're cleaning it up at least. See, I still haven't killed each other here yet. It's only 2002. Osama, no! Well, Osama's gone. But goodbye, Osama. What is this? Oh. Develop the WMDs. After putting Tuwaitha back in operation, we need to start developing weapons of mass destruction. These weapons will be very useful in an event like the Iranian Iraqi War were to repeat itself. For now, we must limit ourselves to the development of only a few weapons of mass destruction for two main reasons. First, is because Iraq lacks some essential materials for the creation of WMDs. A second reason is because some world powers may begin to be alarmed if they discover the presence of weapons of mass destruction on Iraqi soil. Are these civvies because of trade? Yeah, from trade 23. That's pretty good. Shh, don't tell the Western people this. Old wounds. Out of bloody fighting and sacrifices, the time has come to confront Iraq's greatest enemy in the middle, entire Middle East, Iran. Iran has been in bad relations with Iraq since the Theran Revolution, which led to the deliberalization of Muslim theocracy. For example, women were under no obligation to carry the burqa in public, which frightened some nations in the Middle East, and encouraged revolts by the population against the government in 1988. The event that led to the total fall of the relations between Iraq and Iran, or the Iranian Iraqi War, also known as the Dams Qadsidia, there were many fallen in that conflict, especially Iraqi civilians, 120,000 lives were wasted for a way of the ignorance of the Iranian people. But times are about to change. The times come to bandage those old wounds, have prepared for a final showdown against Iran. We'll avenge every single fallen of the war throughout Iraq. Ready the army. After a great homeland has expanded and almost reached its maximum splendor, we must immediately mobilize our army against every single threat, especially Iran, they are our last obstacle before reaching greatness. And now each of our enemies will perish, but before that happens, we must prepare meticulously, starting with the ground forces. And as for Soviet support, to reach the extreme greatness of Iraq and have most of the Middle East under control, we need a strong ally. The best choice for us is definitely the USSR. In the coming weeks, Saddam Hussein will meet with the General Secretary of the USSR to enter into an agreement to support Iraq during a possible conflict. The old man in the sand. There was an old man who lived alone in a hut near the Iranian border and had gone 84 days now without feeling a drop of rain on his skin. Seems pretty normal. As he sat outside his little muddy hut, he heard thunder coming from the west, so he ran inside. Uh, um, and shut his makeshift windows and grabbed all the buckets and cups he could find, even the rusty ones that leaked. So, uh, he stomped outside, nearly tripping over his old rifle, and gazed into the distance. He rejoiced. Um, now, as he saw clouds emerging from the direction the thunder was coming, and he knew that all that left was waiting. So he waited and waited, but when the mood of triumph seemed near, he saw what I had not seen in years. Rows of tanks, soldiers, and other vehicles he couldn't even name merged beyond the hill in the distance. It could be the thought is, uh, he, as memories flashed before his eyes of burned down houses and bleeding comrades being torn to pieces. As the first tank approached, he painted meticulously to resemble a giant fish of some sort, the old man knew. He knew that war would come and that it would be the same as it was the last two times. The old man collapsed on the dusty grounds as the tanks rolled by. The old man was dreaming about peace, and all he got was another war. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to attack helicopters, do we? Yeah, we're still in deficit. Self-propelled rocket artillery. Motorized. I should piercing a little bit. Uh, this gives you more defense, more breakthrough, more soft attack, less hard attack. Arts organization still. Do we have enough rockets? Yes, we do. But if that's the case, I also look at these tanks as well. Because these guys are okay. Because we need at least 30. Helps the organization out just barely. Gives them a little more HP. Barely does anything to the recovery rate. Um, gives us more soft attack. Gives us some way more hard attack. Better air attack. Way better defense. Way more breakthrough. Helps armor out smidgen. More piercing. Um, I think overall that's pretty good. 
Self-propelled anti-air is okay. Um, rocket artillery is okay. Attack helicopters are pretty decent. Logistics is fine. Uh, recon honestly would be pretty good because it gives us quite a few good modifiers that we need, especially for fighting in hills. Better defense. Maybe not mountain, huh? Recon. Mountain movement. That would help. That would be helpful too. Transport helicopter. Does not follow with anything else. Maintenance. Maintenance wouldn't be bad either. We do engineers here for 30. Uh, get rid of that for maintenance instead, maybe. No, we'll go with that for now. We need more tech helicopters. We need more a lot of things. Yeah, that's pretty normal though. Yugoslav Civil War. Honestly, it looks like Yugoslavia should have it. Yugoslavia was always troubled in internally with ethnic tensions and instability. Well, Yugoslavia has a semi-collapse back in the 90s when Croatia and Slovenia left the Federation. Yugoslavia was able to endure the storm, or so it seemed. Yugoslavia has fallen into conflict with multiple insurgents, organizations rising across the country to separate their regions from Yugoslavia. Who would support? Yugoslavia and South African rebels. After rising discontent in apartheid South Africa. A civil war is broken up between the native rebellion group ANC and the white minority ruled South African government. Who do we support? We'll go to the ANC. Propaganda disillusionment. Nice. Increase propaganda reserves, consumer goods, factory output. Dogs of the West. 2% more tech. Uh, division attack and defense by 5%. First, we have to set up support, ready the army, and prepare the plan. As having. After having successfully signed the agreement with the General Secretary of the Soviet Union, the town has come to prepare the battle plans to attack Iran. Since 19... Oh, look at that. Uh, 89, after the Gulf War, one of the greatest enemies of Iraq and its people has been Iran. Iran represents an obstacle for Iraq to achieve greatness. In fact, Iran is the strongest power in the Arab and Muslim world. For this reason, Saddam is determined to oppose it. The time of revenge is coming. We'll make them pay for the fall of 88. Keep building too for now. Revenge 48. Well. And 1988, Iraq fought the Gulf War against Iran. In that war, we suffered many losses, and the final outcome was not what we expected. The war ended in a ceasefire imposed by the UN, and the Americans used us as to weaken Iran, and they weakened us in turn. So many lives wasted for nothing. Until now, after 12 years from that fateful conflict, Times come for revenge, but this time will not be crushed so easily. We repaired a hundred times better than the last conflict with them. We faced many battles and made many sacrifices. We have not reached this point to fail and start all over again. We'll triumph. The Iran is not as strong as it once was, and Americans will not stop. We will not be able to intervene like last time. So this time, we will win, and for we will avenge every single fall of the darned war for Iraq. 20, 2002 presidential referendum. With Saddam's seven-year term ending in another election, was organized to determine Iraq's future and Saddam's support in the Iraqi people. <clears throat> the ballots had two options. One proving the renewal of Saddam's presidency, and the other rejecting him. The voting centers were heavily guarded by soldiers to protect the democratic process from, of course, any sabotage. We don't need any sabotage here, my friends. Uh, we need more of this, though. Uh, as the ballots were finishing getting counted, uh, it was clear that Saddam had won the election with every single eligible citizen of Iraq confidently voting for a great leader to see another seven years. Renewing his term, winning 100% of the votes, shows just how popular our current policies are with multiple people, even signing the ballot with their own blood to show their loyalty to Saddam Hussein. Many celebrations broke out in the major cities congratulating Saddam for a fair and an accurate victory. Patriotism was an all-time high in the celebrations with crowds trampling over and burning Israeli and American flags. Popularity Western democracies could only dream of. 40% more, holy crap. Ah, oh, I love Saddam. Construction speed, re oh, you know what? As much as I want to build more here, I actually want more research speed because we're kind of behind in researching and whatnot. Prepare the plan, my friends. Revenge 48. All right, we're done training. It looks like we're pretty even overall, so we'll see what we can do here and there. And then what? S Saddam victorious. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Um... Play our strengths. It's a fruitless effort to attempt to provide weapons and equipment in all technological sectors, as well as over quality will be reduced. I'll become a jack of all trades, but master of none. As better focus on areas where we already hold technological parity with our enemies, such as our missile tech and rocket launcher systems that we developed in collaboration with Yugoslavia. Do they not attack us? Can we go in? 
Oh, look at that. Of course you do. We will gladly take your supplies. We need them. How's air going? Hey, it's going okay. We're getting scrambled a little bit, but we're doing some decent damage, at least for now. Uh, aircraft acquisition. Our airports are severely lacking in aircraft, with a significant portion being lost during the Gulf War in the year following it. However, there are a few options that we can attempt, which will allow us to bolster our existing fleet while we can wait for more permanent solutions. Boot ammo, good. Definitely what we want right now. Piercing and whatnot, yes. And we will stop the attacks if we really need to soon. Because it looks like overall we're not winning in a lot of places. So let's hold. Hold. Oh, Egyptian president assassinated. Well, that sucks for you guys. So get some more strength back. We've lost 60,000. That's a lot. We've killed off 67,000. Well, it's not bad. Overall, considering everything you know. No, no, no. You go here. Go here together. Support equipment and whatnot. No, you can't win there, right? Alright, so you're going to hold down. Because you're doing a counterattack. Wow. Iran refuses our request. I wonder why. Uh, unfortunately, but also unsurprising. The Iranian government has rejected our request, seeing that these aircraft are now the property of the Iranian Air Force and serve as reparations for the Iraq-Iran War of the 80s. <clears throat> While the Persian Gulf War has ended long ago, we are still suffering from its impact to this day. With the Iranian Air Force significantly strengthened by our own aircraft, while our own air force is small and weak, the injustice of foreign politics becomes apparent by the day. Next example, will bury its heads where ours is in the sand. And, but Yugoslavia is except. The Yugoslav leadership has accepted our offer, stating that they will always be supportive of increased partnership and cooperation between our two nations. They provide a constant flow of spare parts in the form of aid shipments via Turkey, bypassing any possible inspections by the UN and preventing these ships from being disrupted in the event of another conflict in the Persian Gulf. They did not disappoint. And the legacy of Mohammed Rayyan. During the Iran-Iraq War, Mohammed Rayyan was one of the most deadly pilots, scoring at least five air combat kills against the Iranian aircraft. His incredible skill gave him access to the MIG-25, the rapid interceptor guarded by Soviet advisors that only allowed the best of the best to fly. Unfortunately, tragedy struck in 1986, when it was shot down by one of Iran's aces, Jalil Zandi. The story should have served to inspire our current generation of pilots who are used to cowering away from the coalition aircraft that used to patrol our skies. It's through boldness and determination that our air force has, has survived and will continue to prosper in the years to come. As long as they don't push us back, I'm good with it. 70,000? 145,000. That's right. No, you're not allowed to win. No. What's going on? Oh. Effects will decrease. Ooh. Well, that's not good. Got any uh, strength here? No, yeah, work. That'd be nice, thank you. Um, be charismatic. Why not? Hey, Saddam's a charismatic guy, don't you know? Okay, they're just going to keep attacking. I'm sure they got a lot of manpower like we do. What do they got here? Oil producers, home of the Islamic Revolution. So that's pretty strong for them. Yeah, that's actually quite strong. A lot of manpower. I'm sure they're going to run out of equipment here soon enough. Hopefully. Tehran. Islamic Revolution in Hungary. Ooh, better cast. Yes, please. Better fighters now, too. Ooh, we want more of this, too. And regular sorties. One of the key indicated of a uh, keys of an indicated well-trained air force is the number of flight hours the pilot receives per year. After all, there's no better way to train a pilot than to test the skills in real conditions. We must ramp up the number of sorties performed by Air Force, which will allow us to train both their pilots and master their logistics behind high-intensity operations. Very nice. Well, everyone, um, here we're at casualty report: four hundred thousand losses for them, about hundred thousand for us, and uh, well. I, oh, we decided to go on the offensive because, well, they're on the offensive against us, and, uh, well, they're going to destroy their own divisions for the most part, it looks like. We'll see what we can what, can we, what we can do here, if I can speak correctly, as we, of course, do you know, focus we're doing right now. Um, yeah, uh, the unfortunate attack, probably not the best idea, but we're going to take it and run with it, because sometimes you just got to love the Hoi 4 AI. Um, they're going to take Tehran, it might end the war, or maybe not. Half a million casualties, is that all so far? Um, it's good to help out here and there. Uh, but really what you want to focus on is being right here. Take that, you can cut them off, potentially. And that is the most important thing you can do. 
There we go. There we go. Look at that. Ah, Rebels Crush the Liberian government. Look at that. Oh. Well, I guess I got one wrong. I think. Yeah, I think we got that one wrong. Whoopsie. My bad. Um, we got a couple comments still from yesterday. Players and C is there's no way Saddam would uh, uh, support the apartheid government. Um, so, yeah. It is what it is. I just, I'm here to support whoever. That's all I care about. If we can benefit from them, so now we're going to get penalized because uh, well, I made a bad call. But you can't make every call 100% perfect, you know. Hey, look at that. An encirclement? Goodbye. Yeah, uh, I'd say we've won this war for the most part. A Somali peace operation? Look at that. Where the Horn of Africa fall out of communism? Oh. The world? I was gonna see soon. Oh, yeah. The Re Labor Re Rebels won. We lost 75 political power, but it could be a lot worse. That I'm not super worried about. And I don't want to do the military factory stuff for now, because I want to see what happens with this war. Um, yeah. Guys, I mean, how many divisions got left? Up to 50, which is still quite a few, but they're like literally on their last leg. Like, wow. Basic added shells, more soft attack, all the good stuff, you know. Capitulation of Iran. And a stunning show of force in the Middle East, the armed forces of Iraq have overwhelmed the army of Iran, pushing the theocratic government all the way to Tehran before capitulating the old state. Saddam Hussein, in a speech in front of a crowd of 200,000 Iraqis, declared the day of celebration for the people of Iraq, announcing the annexation of border regions east of the Iraqi border and establishing a new uh, interim government in Iran. This is no doubt a drastic change to the until now, calm status quo in the Middle East, as Iraq now has embraced its more hawkish foreign policy and appears they show no intention of stopping. International observers have universally condemned Iraq for its breaking of the peace, but it seems Iraq shows no regard for these condemnations. Instead, they seem to be already planning for the next target. Iraq is back on the world stage. And Saddam victorious. Finally, the willpower and determination of the Iraqi people has finally triumphed over its enemies, granting Iraq and Saddam a great victory. Now, having settled the problems of the newly acquired territories, the government has to make a decision which will determine the fate of Iraq. Either stay with the pan-Arab ideals of Nasser, or found a new Ba'atis ideal with Iraqi characteristics. The ideas of Saddam's new Ba'atism lies in very close cooperation between Arab nations, with the same ideals and form of government, aligned with the ideas of Iraq, forming another branch of Arab socialism, that is, pan-Arabism, with Iraqi characteristics. So what routes do we got here? So, proclaim Greater Iraq. Interesting. Deport the Lord's Persians. Huh. Interesting. Establish your brother nations. Claims owner control of Al Hasaka. Interesting. Form the Middle East Economic Union. Pan Arabism with the Iraqi characteristics. Modernizing Iraq. Strengthening our hold. Construction of the economy, a sense of normalcy, benefits of planned economy, domestic goods sector. Oh, we got the next step. Oh boy. Attack of Lebanon, just in case. Gains non existent relations. Interesting. Connect supply lines. Desert shall tremble from detonation and the royal from world Iraq's might. <laughs> just in case. Oh, Oppenheimer. Force draft, ready the Air Force. Death to the state there that's maybe Jewish. Sabotage behind enemy lines. Bomb supply lines. Nasser avenged. But we'll have to proclaim a United Arab Republic, Republic uh, because we have dreams of the United Arab Nation. We know the United Arab Republics. We annex Syrian occupation zone. Replace dreams of the United Arab Nation with a United Arab Nation. Uh, with more political power, unlocks a new state, Saddam proclaims the United Arab Republics. Saddam, just like Nasser, has ever since he entered politics, has always had only one dream, to unify all Arab nations under a single flag and homeland. Finally, after 30 years after the death of Nasser, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong, and his pan-Arabic ideals, Saddam has achieved a dream forming the United Arab Republics and unifying the Arab world, Al-Majd Lelarabi, glory to the Arabs. So, another comment was for me to play as uh, Vietnam sometime. That sounds like fun. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we'll have one more episode on this one. Oh, wow, look at that Iran. Oh, look at this. We got Akuzistan. Oh, not good. Insufficient garrison. Resistance growth. Not good. And we still have you, which I don't mind. I like the less resistance target. 
And more attack, but that's destroying our compliance gain, and I want more compliance. Uh, we're just gonna get more attack anyways. There you go. Um, do we get this one too? Yeah, we definitely need some compliance here, which is not ideal, but I think I'll end it there. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. So we'll probably end up this campaign by bombing people with a descent of Jews. Have a great day.